Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. There we are. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Uh, I said it. I said my. Uh, Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, everybody. And with my hand, hey, hey. Uh, welcome, everybody, to another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. Uh, I'm your host, Rick. And I'm your host, Dave. And we are painting. Uh, we're going to finish up our D&D miniatures that we've been painting, yeah? Yep, we sure are. Cool. I'm, I'm working on the Tiefling Sorcerer. And I'm working on the Dragonborn. Uh, fighter. Dragonborn Fighter. So I'm going to be uh, finishing off his dark metallic armor and also the red skin. It's um, ridiculously amazing how well yours looks. What are you talking about? Shut up. Nah. It's so good. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, there we go. And if you are um, just tuning in and watching this, uh, the last few episodes have been uh, involving the Dragonborn and the Tiefling. So yep. you can watch some uh, techniques because Dave has actually been showing some really good techniques with yellow for the coat, uh, cloak, uh, the, the metallics, the reds, how to paint red and yellows and stuff. It's been really good the last yellows. few episodes in that regard. Well, we've had something, something that we've been focusing on, yeah. I guess. Uh, we talked a lot about eyes as well last time around. That's right. So that was fun. Uh, that was prompted by a question from the, the chat. So if you've got any questions about painting or things you want to know, uh, jump in there and ask us. Ask away. Yeah. <coughs> Rick will be only too happy to teach you. Ha! Uh, I try. I, I'm, <laughs> here, I'm here to learn. What's up, Michael and Hiram and Michael and Brad? Everybody is in the house. Appreciate you guys joining us today. Excellent. All right. So, basically, yeah, with the with the red that I've got here, I've started off. I'll get it in the right spot. Uh, started off with the um, Mephiston red base paint from uh, Games Workshop uh, from the Citadel range. Uh, I like it because it, it goes on quite well and um, has pretty good coverage for a right. red. Um, red typically doesn't have sort of strong pigmentation, um, so they can sometimes feel a bit thin. Um, two, two thin coats is always good, as um, Duncan will tell you, Duncan <laughs> Rhodes. Uh, but uh, yeah, the next thing I'm going to do is grab some of the uh, Vallejo game color bloody red and start highlighting these uh, these sections so so I'm gonna go ahead and share this real quick okay you jump on and do your social media thing we're in Tiefling sorcerer but uh, yeah red can be a tough one so basically I'm what I'm doing here is starting with a I guess a mid-tone, that mid-tone red uh, okay. in the Mephiston red. Um, I'm going to take it up a bit with the uh, the blood red here, um, and then a little bit, take it a little bit higher by mixing in some uh, yellow and some uh, ivory. Uh, it might sound like uh, by mixing in the ivory that'll make it a little bit pinkish thing is, it will. And you want that? Um, not necessarily, but uh, it's using uh, using the ivory or working up with sort of pinks mm -hmm. is a little bit easier to control the, um, I guess, the rate of change of your ivory. Uh, if the, sorry, the rate of change of your highlights. Okay. Uh, so you could mix in yellow, of course, if you wanted to, um, yellows and oranges. Uh, but it'll take you a little bit longer to add your different layers of highlighting because yellows are fairly thin. Um, something like the ivory uh, or a white it gives a lot more pigmentation okay. to it so you can highlight quicker. But then you just come back with a red um, glaze or a red wash to, to take it from that pink to a back to a red. So wow, okay. That's... Uh, Something that is a nice little trick for painting up reds quickly. So, there we go. Just 
Interesting. Looks like these dragonborn only have three fingers. <laughs> I think they actually that, do. It's like, like a standard it's like, thing? It's it? like this. They got like... The, oh, you know, right, okay. It's like... Sort of combined. Yeah, so it would be... Yeah, it looks like the maybe the lower two. Dragonborn. But yeah. It's a fun thing. Right. And one last one. Just gonna do this on my personal page. You and your personal page. Mm hmm. It's work time, Rick. Work. Well, I, mean, I have over 4,000 people that could potentially be watching this on my this own is personal page. This is true. Yeah. They won't. <laughs> Bastards. But one could hope that they will. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I shared it in the Dungeons and Dragons page in the Critical Role fan group. The reason I, I put it in the Critical Role uh, fan group is because tonight's a new episode. It's Thursday, so a new episode will be on tonight. Cool. Critical Role, where they play Dungeons and Dragons, a bunch of voice actors and act, you know, and actresses yep. um, that also do other, you know, actual acting jobs. Sure. I can't say actual acting jobs because it's, it's all acting. Yeah. You know, they, uh, the voice acting is just as much acting as the stage or theater or. Um, in movies and stuff because you're taking on a character, you're having to just strain your vocal cords in some capacity, I'm sure. Yep. Um, but uh, one of the reasons is I'm getting, we get to interview uh, Matt Mercer. Tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Matt Mercer? Matt Mercer. We'll be doing an interview with him tomorrow, uh, a, a live Skype interview. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's so really it should be cool. fun. Um, so if you are a Critical Role fan, you want, if you have any questions for Matt... Uh, you can uh, email them to us at uh, uh, Game Trade Media's Facebook page. Just send us a message. Say, nice hey, yeah. Cool. And uh, if you have a question that you'd like us to ask Matt, uh, we'll pick a couple. And uh, I'll be like, and by the way, some of our, our, <laughs> our watchers and some of the Critical Role fans out there would like to know, uh, you know, X, Y, or Z, you know, whatever. whatever. We, I mean, we're going to screen them. We don't want to know any... Uh, De personal yeah. details? Yeah, personal details, but <laughs> like maybe his next big his con schedule or uh, like one of the questions I'm going to ask him is as a, a fan of tabletop and D&D &D and all that stuff, you know, he's ob he's got to be a collector of some sort and I want to find out like what is his holy grail piece oh, okay. for, um, that he does not personally own yet for his uh, his collection, right? And uh, you know, that's one of the things I like to find out about people in in the gaming industry. Is like, what is it that you don't have that you wish you did? Right. You know. <clears throat> and on that note, yeah. Dave, is there anything <laughs> in that arena that you are like, oh, I've always wanted this particular piece, or or you, you know, I bucked the trend, huh? You know, I I don't have a thing. You don't have a thing? I don't have a thing. Oh, Never. that is sad. I, it's not sad. It's just... It's sad to me, yeah. as I am a collector. Sure. Of all things. Sure. You know. I'm sure there's lots of stuff I'd like to have. But I couldn't tell you. There's none that I'm, like, always looking for. Uh -huh. Or that I have on a wish list on Amazon or scouring eBay for or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. But if you were to come across something and you're like, I would like to have this in my collection, you just get it or not, right? Yeah, get it or not. One of those two things. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. it's all you got. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's the same, sort of my, my basic approach. Get it or not. If I, uh, I have a very sort of zen approach to shopping. Okay. I think. I like to think it's a zen approach to shopping anyway. It might not be. But uh, I think when I'm buying gifts to my wife or something, I'll wander around and, until I see something that, that strikes me and grabs me. And sure. And says, she'd like this. And, okay. then I, and then I buy it. Okay. And then I go home. So I don't go out and plan anything. Okay. Um, you just let the universe direct you. Pretty much, yeah. Sometimes it works. <laughs> Sometimes it does not work. Okay. So but, how about this? Yep. If... Do you have a? Are you a fan or like of anybody in our arena that also paints? That like you really like it, the the work that they do, and you would like to own a piece of 
uh, a miniature that they've done before that you haven't got, or an art piece of artwork maybe? Mm. Still, still no. Yeah, it's an odd one. I, I know that. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of people whose work I really admire. <coughs> okay. But um, but I don't really have that uh, get something and put it on the shelf kind of oh. approach. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why. I mean, my mum was always a big art collector. Okay. Um, she has to this day still has like 30, 40 paintings in her house. Wow. And um, but not me. I, d I don't. I don't know. Okay. I like uh, I like when it comes to typically to miniature painting. I like to focus on the sort of the act of miniature painting and the okay. the enjoyment I get from that. Sure. Once it's done, it's cool to have. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, but eh. yeah, okay. So I'd, I'd feel that I was taking it away from somebody else if I was to get like a okay. I, by that, actually, that makes sense. That makes that. sense for me. Yeah. Uh, with you, in that uh, you do a lot of stuff in regards to painting and getting other painters and hobbyists together to actually create yeah. works of art that you do charitable drives with. Yep. So I actually can absolutely see that being uh, your, your main focus in some capacity over collecting. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's kind of my driver. I, I like to, um, yeah, I like to see lots of cool stuff. Mm-hmm and be inspired by it. But there's always, th thankfully with, with miniature painting in particular, there's always something new going on. Mm -hmm. Somebody trying something, um, somebody trying something new, a different approach. Uh, and and that's really exciting. Right. I like to keep an eye on what people are doing, what they're, what they're trying. But to try and nail me down to, to uh, something I'd like to, collect. to own or have or collect. Interesting. So, Okay. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, no, I mean, now that I think about it, you, you, you're more of the person that you don't have to ha own it physically, but the f having the experience of seeing it yeah. is enough for you. Yeah. Um, but also, if you are painting something or uh, you see someone else's work, you're probably more along the line is like, uh, that could inspire someone else to get into the hobby, or that would be a great piece for this charitable event that we're having. Yep. You know, I, I can see that with yeah. you, and yeah. that's like that. that's pretty admirable. Well, things that I can things I'm not that I can trying to be from. all like that's awesome, dude, but I, it is. But it, it, <laughs> at the same time, I, I feel like you try to lead me somewhere. There's a there's an end to this conversation that you'd like to. Not, not really. No? Okay. No, okay. I really okay, was cool. curious. Yeah. Um, but if I were to go somewhere, <laughs> with it, <laughs> I would go along the lines of you know, because down the pipe later this year, a book is coming out. All right. Yep. Co the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games. Right. Yep. So that's one of my curiosities: is what other people collect. Yeah. What makes something collectible? You know, just because it's a miniature, yep. is it necessarily collectible? Right. Um, or just because it's a board game, what makes that board game collectible? Is it because it has an exclusive thing you can only get from, let's say, a Kickstarter? Yep. And now it has a collectible piece or an art piece on it. You know. Box art is different because you got it from a different platform in, in your purchase, or yeah. is it just so old, like the, the original Monopoly board game? Right. You know? Yeah. I think, um, yeah. No, that's uh, that's true. In that book, um, because I was interviewed for that book. Yes, you were. And uh, spoiler alert. Uh oh. When you get to the question about what's your holy grail, <laughs> did we just ruin it? Just that, that one, that that was one, one question out of 10. So oh, okay. You only ruined 10% of the book. Well, 10% of your... My section of your the book. section it's of the very book. very tiny section. It's like, that's half a page. I think, of the I think it's two pages. It's two pages? Because you have artwork, you have photos Oh, of, yeah, I, of sent a, I sent a whole bunch of photos that um, I, couldn't, I couldn't decide what to send. There's a lot of things I really enjoyed painting. So, so that was good. Nice. But, uh, so, yes, there, I guess there was kind of an end point to that, <laughs> that uh, leading... <laughs> Um, but that, like, so that's one of the things is we'll be, um, before we probably go to the live aspect of it, uh, Carrie from Overstreet or from Gemstone Publishing yep. is going to be asking Matt some questions for the book. Oh, cool. So there'll be some stuff that'll be kind of secret in there that I'm uh, going to be asking, talking to Matt. And when I say Matt, I mean Matt Mercer. Yep. We're going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons, the hobby, the industry in general. Right. The renaissance that board games and tabletop gaming is undergoing yeah. um, right now. Yeah. 
is the, does he expect there to be a bubble? Is it going to pop? And what's going to what's going to be the cause potential? You know, right. um, and or where is this all leading? You right. know, there's so many good questions that uh, are out there. And if you guys, again, if anybody watching has any questions for Matt Mercer, uh, please message those to us uh, via uh, Game Trade Media here on Facebook, and I'll pick a couple of them and ask them those questions. So that'll be kind of neat. Yep. Very cool. Okay, um, so basically, I've gone through and just done some kind of rough highlights over the guy, um, which we can see in the, the thing there. Not too, uh, not too stark or anything. <laughs> Maybe um, a little bit on the beak or on top of the on top of his head there. Uh, Josh over at Mini Paint Studio has a question for you. Oh sure. He goes, Dave, are you excited about the new K3 for Dark Age? Uh, he knows he is. The new K3? Mm hmm Which, oh, the um, rules update? Or, because I don't think there are any miniatures. No, no new miniatures. Hmm. But uh, I'm certainly excited about the uh, the way the Dark Age is going. I'm sure. Okay. Um, basically, uh, because it's all, all the rules are available online. Mm-hmm. There's an opportunity to, to go through, and if you, if they get a situation where, despite sort of heavy play testing or play testing with a, a bunch of different groups uh, around the country and around the world, mm -hmm. um, they might publish a card, like a unit card that um, is a little bit off. Okay. Um, maybe it's slightly overpowered, slightly like underpowered. Um, it doesn't sit well in amongst the, the rest of the, the faction. Okay. Um, they can go through and update those. Oh, nice. Um, little card, a card here, a card there. Uh, it's not too bad. So. Michael Patrick says he's, all, he's so far behind in his minis. I have Typhus. What? <laughs> Mortation, Oop. the great unclean Mort one, and a uh, Typhos, Ty yep. Mortation. Mortarian. It may have, may have been what it corrected. Uh, the great unclean one and a beast of Nurgle to paint. Right. Nice. So remember when we were talking about Zinch the other day? Yes. Is the god of change. Um, Nurgle is the god of decay and plague and pestilence. Uh, pestilence. Nice. So, lots of fun stuff there. I actually have painted um, some Nurgle, uh, Warhammer Nurgle characters. Okay. Yep. So. Cool. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just run a um, red. Wash. This is from uh, the Army Painter range. Red tone over all of the, the skin. All right. So it starts to knock back that um, that bright um, highlight a little bit. Mind you, of course, the camera's picking things up in really stark contrast. Yeah, basically glazing this back. To, uh, also, add, it, it's fairly the red wash is a fairly dark wash, so it's adding a little bit of shading to the to the red skin, okay. which is neat. Okay. All right. Excellent. How's your tiefling going? I think he's looking okay. Cool. Yeah? Yep. So it's not too bad. You just put some washes on the coat? Yeah. yeah. I'm doing a, actually a dark tone wash, or strong tone wash right now on it. Okay. So, and I don't think, I, I did a red wash over, over all the things I had done on the flaming dragon thing. Okay. So I don't think I'm going to do anything else to that. Yeah, I'd leave that. And then just uh, the scepter here. Okay. Yeah. So we've got that. I'm just going to let that wash dry now. Um, mm -hmm. What I think I'll do once that wash is dry is um, actually jump in with some of the purple tone from Army Painter. Nice. And put that into the sort of right into the depths of the the shading on the um, on the skin. So because the purple will go really well against the, the red. The yellow. 
because of the color wheel. Nice. <laughs> so. Uh, let's see. Steve says, uh, better late than never. Glad I didn't miss the whole show. Glad you're here, Steve. Uh, Josh's response is, I don't think I'll be streaming today because I'm assembling 96 skinks. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Carl, I have about 50% of my Reaper Kickstarter, one, two, and three sets to paint. I've redefined behind. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of miniatures. That is, for the Reaper Bones. Yes. How many was in that first Reaper Bones one? There was like three hundred. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> it was Fuck ridiculous. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I don't know. Yeah. I, actually, I didn't uh, back the first, I think, first three Reapers. The, I, I backed the most recent one. I think it was Series 4. Uh, three. Is three the most recent? I think three is the most recent. Because I haven't got mine yet. Come here. Okay. Uh, but I think I'm like in one of the last waves right. to receive <laughs> it. Uh, I'm actually pretty excited. Um, and I know we're painting Whiz Kids miniatures, but we are, you know, we do tend to stray and talk about some other product out there. All sorts of stuff. Yeah. But um, I've been noticing that some people have been starting to receive their Kickstarter on the Rising Sun. The Rising Sun Kickstarter, yeah. Yeah, so I'm really stoked to hopefully get mine in the mail soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> because that will be something that will be available at your local retailer later. Yep. And uh, so we will be able to bring that in and, and do some painting on that as well. Did you see the uh, the fun, the, the funny thing that happened with that? I did. <laughs> did you see the, uh, the Facebook post from Simon this morning? I did not. Oh, there, okay. Is it in response to said... Uh, yeah. Folly? Yep. Um, so, for those who haven't seen it, uh, when Simon uh, created the um, Rising Sun Kickstarter and went through and were uh, creating all of the, the monsters, they went to a uh, Wikipedia page, apparently on... Um, Japanese sort of, mythos, yeah. Uh, yeah, sort of East, East Asian mm -hmm. uh, mythological creatures. And they they picked out the ones that they liked, right. to, and created um, created the monsters, and did some fantastic work, some glorious looking miniatures. Mm -hmm. um, but one of them is the Kot Kotahi, um, or uh, Kotai, Kotai. I can't remember, I can't remember. Exactly how it's pronounced. Uh, but it turns out that that's not an actual Japanese mythological creature. Mm -hmm. um, it was <laughs> a couple of guys, a guy in Australia and a guy in uh, New Zealand having a bit of fun with each other, and one of them, uh, the guy in Australia, changed the Wikipedia page and put his New Zealand buddy up on uh, as a mythological a cre creature. creature. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> uh, uh, Kotai was his name. Uh, it's, a, it's a, it's a uh, what, what's the... A Maori. A Maori, yeah. Yep. A Maori name. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, he was, <laughs> the, the post that uh, Simon put up today was actually a link to a video, uh, a, a clip from a TV show in New Zealand called The Project, mm -hmm. where they interviewed the guy who, uh, <laughs> who was the New Zealand guy whose name is Kotai. Oh, that's hilarious. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. It was just a, a very cool five minute interview and just very uh, quite, quite amusing and very typical of the uh, sort of the Kiwi sense of humor. Right. And uh, approach to life. But it, it basically, yeah, he was contacted by Simon once it was sort of brought to life. And, and we're like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we were fooled. We were fooled by that. We didn't do uh, extra research on, on that one. And, but I actually think it's a kind of cool add-in. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, when you think about it, because the miniature for that particular piece, awesome. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely cool. So that guy should be like, oh, yeah, that's totally me. Yep. It's awesome. Yeah, no, he was uh, he, he was happy. He, he was fine with it. Yeah. He was okay. And uh, also he was he was quite happy that he and his friend in Australia were going to be sent a, a copy. Oh, so nice. Send him a copy of the game and all of the, the uh, Kickstarter exclusive stuff. That's awesome. Because that, that uh, stretch goal was a, an exclusive for that one. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I would have loved it if, like, when you got the box, you open it up and it's a miniature of that guy. Like, yeah. Not even the monster, <laughs> but just it's a miniature of this guy in, like, shorts and slippers or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that would have been awesome. <laughs> yep. You know, where's the, where's the spot over there? You, you kind of got the mm -hmm. good spot to show off. Oh, the show off this. Okay. We'll bring it to this one. Uh, I think it's here. 
Not too bad. Where am I bringing it? There we go. Work backwards and everything. Wow, yeah. That was good. Yeah, not too bad. Bring the lining. Uh, definitely tabletop worthy. Yep. You could without a doubt go adventuring with this guy. Yes, I could. And I just might. <laughs> but I think I'm going to make him a bad guy. Well, yeah. he kind of looks like one. He does look like a bad guy. <laughs> one that I would not want to uh, encounter. No. Very nice. Just uh, Josh said he just booked a mini, or a Rising Sun commission. Oh, cool. I think I have one coming up in May. In March, sorry. Okay. Carl uh, says that uh, Reaper 3 was the last shipped. Reaper 4 is done, but not shipped. Yeah. Oh, so my, it must have been Reaper 4 bad, that I yeah, back. Uh, I also have the Reaper, <laughs> what's a CAV Kickstarter 1? I'm not sure what that is. The CAV part of that. I'm not sure. Uh, Kurt Pearson's in here. What up, dudes? Hey, Kurt. What's up? Kurt's here. No more jokes about him. All right, yeah, we got to be quiet. Got to be no more, <laughs> no more uh, uh, talk on Kurt. No. He actually contacted me earlier this week about a project they're working on at his, yeah. at the company he got hired into here did he, at uh, did he start the, Academy uh, Games. Did he start the email with, please take me back? No, he didn't. Oh. Oddly. <laughs> Oddly, he did I'm not. Messing I'm messing around. It was more of a, so. <laughs> I was wondering. Yeah, we got a thing going down. Uh, a good thing. Uh, it actually will hopefully help Academy Games a lot, out a lot in regards to uh, getting more eyes on their product, so um, which would be really cool. What's a hey, Kurt? If you're still there, uh, do me a favor and tell if you can. What's the big game you guys are working on? You, you kind of, I think he had it at PAX, so it shouldn't be okay. like a big taboo cool. thing. Yeah. But uh, what is the what's that game called? If I, if you can talk about it. If you can't talk about it, talk about it anyway. Yeah, give us a, a secret name for it. We'll call it Project X, coming out of Academy Games. Yeah. If Kurt made it, it's probably called Project Regret for leaving <laughs> this show. Yeah, well. I think it is called Project X. Agents of Mayhem oh, board game. Go. Project X, Agents of Mayhem. Okay. Cool. And uh, so, yeah, so Agents of Mayhem uh, is, a, is a board game that they have come out, and it has miniatures. Cool. And uh, those will be fun to paint. He's, he actually might be rolling down here. That's one of the things that we were going to talk to Johnny about today because, you know, Johnny's the, the track keeper of uh, our episodes here. Uh, how far away are we from the 100th episode? I think this is like 88 that we're on now, so, I think. Okay. So 12 more. So okay. that's a month and a half. Yeah. That'll put us into March. Shoot. Mm -hmm. Oof. Wow. It's crazy. Cool. Are you going to be, uh, Kurt, are you going to be at Gamma? You need to let me know. <laughs> he, he Kurt just said Johnny about, can't count. Well, I'm just throwing numbers out there, Kurt, so. Because um, uh, he's thinking we should do like a a special 100th episode All right, yeah. uh, reunion slash bring like Drew and a couple others back and just have a big a paint party. That'd be cool. That would be fun. Yeah. Um, I told him he was insane thinking mm -hmm. it, but you know, it's very ambitious. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, yeah. Well, uh, speaking of uh, maybe bringing Drew in for an episode, yeah. um, should we talk about what we're doing next month? Considering I'll have it. You should have it tomorrow in your hands tomorrow. Yes, I should. So, pretty excited about that. So what is it? Star Wars Legion. That's right. So we'll have Star Wars Legions in hand tomorrow, or at least we should, coming from Fantasy Flight Games. You know, it's their new big Star Wars miniature game, skirmish, mini skirmish game. And so we're going we're gonna to do a lot of video content around that, co that, that particular game, not just painting. Yep. We're going to um, go down to a local store here, do some demo videos with um, the store owner okay. and some of their yep. staff and, uh, and uh, people coming into the store to learn how to play it. We're going to be doing uh, some videos around the demo kits and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, so pretty excited to be able to play in that arena. Um, 
but we'll, you know, February's coming up quick, yep. and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think if um, it'd be great if we can get Drew in for an episode to mm -hmm. talk to us about painting white on his stormtroopers and yeah, um, or maybe not his, but on the stormtroopers. Yeah, and uh, my buddy Jeff Jenkins actually is uh, would be very interested in coming in and doing some painting. Okay, I think he'd be a great guy to to get in and maybe talk about uh, object source lighting on um, like <coughs> Darth Vader's lightsaber. Okay. Having that red glow on the on his on his actual body armor. On Vader, yeah. Oh. So I think that'd be neat. That would be cool. Um, so one of the things that was asked of me by the folks over at Fantasy Flight yep. was about uh, doing scratch builds. Okay. Uh, because you know you'd mentioned maybe we'll do a, a build of some sort. Right. Yep. A terrain, like a terrain build. Yeah. And they asked yep. what uh, what your appetite was for that. Right. So. Um, I think at the, the moment, it's one of those things where it's, it's kind of tough to decide whether we're going to do something that um, we can fit into a, an episode mm -hmm. of Painting Happy Little Minis, or if we do something that spreads across two episodes, or that we have to split up. Or do, we do re or, or do we pre-record it? Or do we pre-record it? And just let it drop segments of it yep. in, in, in an episode. Yeah, there's a lot. We could possibly do that. There's a, lot yeah. of, a bunch of different ways we can do it. Yeah. But um, probably... Doing something that uh, can be fairly straightforward for people mm -hmm. um, who haven't done terrain building before is messing around with some of the insulation foam. Okay. Um, it used to be, be available in like pinks and pink or blue. Blue. Yeah. Um, but I think most of the time it's available in green now. I yeah. Think so. Yeah, I think I and saw it at Lowe's the other day. Yeah. Um, and I've been I've been using a bunch of it on a t table build at the moment. But uh, yeah, making some sort of Tatooine style buildings. That would be really um, slick. Some out, outposts kind of buildings. Simple stuff that was possibly prefab and mm -hmm. dropped in place, that sort of thing. Um, I think that'll be our sort of best approach okay. for that. Um, I like it. It's pretty, pretty easy to make the basic shapes mm -hmm. and to do a little bit of detailing and then painting is the main yeah. sort of part after that. Hey, James has joined us. Hey, James. Since the Imperial Assault minis aren't compatible when Legion is a war game, I think it will be f it will be fine. Anyone in this room going to be at Farpoint next month? Ooh, Farpoint. That's here in in, uh, in uh, Hunt Maryland. Hunt Valley. Hunt Valley, I believe, yeah. Um, well, I don't know the dates on it. I may have to investigate it if it's not... If it doesn't uh, conflict with any of my other scheduled events, then perhaps. Cool. I'll look it up right now. Excellent. Well, next week I'm heading off to my first convention of the year. Which one is that? Uh, Captain Con, up in Rhode Island. Captain Con. Captain Con. Yep. Okay. I'm actually heading up there to play some Dark Age. Nice. Which will be cool. Farpoint is February 9th through the 11th. Okay. Oh. So two two weeks away. Two weeks away, yeah. There's a good chance I could, I, I could stop in on that one. I wouldn't mind. I have my kids uh, next weekend. All right. So, yeah. We'll be free and clear. Yeah. And then uh, Toy Fair, I don't know if I'm... I'm still debating on whether I might make a day trip up to Toy Fair. Okay. Um, we'll see. The weekend after Farpoint, which would be nice. And say hi to lots of folks. Okay, so I've just gone through and done some highlighting with uh, the Vallejo uh, Gun Gray, the Model A range on the silver. And that's a nice, sort of fairly dark silver. Um, basically what I wanted to do is, because I've got this lovely sort of bright yellow on the back, I didn't want the silver to be too light. Um, so we'll go and hit some of the, the edges of it with the uh, one of my favorites, 
the uh, Bully Hoover. There we go. Aluminium. Al aluminium. Uh -huh. Aluminium. You can say it. I can't. I, you know I can't <laughs> speak proper English. <laughs> I can't say aluminium. 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 Or zinch. Zinch. Dang, you got it right. Dang it. Good job. <laughs> so. Wasn't my intent. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell. Uh, Mr. Smack Talk, we'll have to watch it on replay. Uh oh. Friday uh, the 8th of Sundays? Mm -hmm. Okay. I might take my mini there to see if I can get a 40K game in. That'd be cool, Michael. Walter's like, wow. I'll be playing some uh, Age of Sigmar, says James. AKA, I am a noob, so the vets here were easy win. That's all right. Oh, is there an uh, Age of Sigmar tournament at Farpoint? I don't know. Uh, is there an a Age of Sigmar at, uh, at Farpoint? Is that what Michael? Or I, I may have to just look at the events and that they have scheduled. Are you talking about Farpoint or are you talking about Captain Con or something? I don't think they're talking about Captain Con. Nah. Nobody's talking about Captain Con. <laughs> just me. <laughs> That's a shame. I'm catching the train up as well. I'm are you really? I'm pretty excited about that. You ride the train very often or? No. No, not at all. Not at all. I've, I've basically ridden it to New York and back once. Okay. New York City and back. But, okay. uh, it's like the idea of not having to drive. Oh, the, it is pretty slick. And the uh, great thing is, I mean, February in Rhode Island is usually a storm. Oh. And rather than getting snowed in, yeah, the train still runs. Maybe. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I could end up stuck on the train for sure. But we'll see if that happens. Yeah, that'd be pretty pretty fun tr little trip. Is it just you? Uh, no, I'm heading up with a buddy of mine, uh, Thomas Wynn. Okay. Uh, he's coming over tonight. We're going to play some practice games. Nice. Been a while since we both played. So. Yeah, that should be a lot of fun. Yep. Man. That's one of the things I need to, to do is maybe go to a con not for work. Right. And actually participate in a lot of the gameplay. Um good idea. Uh, yeah. So. It's not likely to happen. Yeah, I know. It would be a great idea. <laughs> it would be a great <laughs> idea. And maybe, you know, maybe one or two this year. Yeah. There's enough local gaming cons now that I, I could actually make it a thing where I could go and play uh, at, like, at, uh, at Farpoint Far or yep. GADCon or um, What's GADCon? GADCon is Game and Dice Convention in Aberdeen. Okay. Um, it's mainly a D and D Adventure League and Pathfinder Society, Starfinder Society event. Okay. Uh, I think they also have some Frostgrave. Um, I didn't recall seeing any like Warhammer right. at the last one. Well, early early March, there's um, Cold Wars. Cold Wars? Up in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Nice. Cold Wars is run by the uh, Historical Miniature Gaming Society. Okay. So. What are they, uh, like M N Napoleonics and stuff like that? Um, there's actually all sorts of... Micro uh, armor? Uh, yep, micro armor. <laughs> all, sorts of miniature, all sorts of miniature gaming. Okay. Be there. Um, Flames of War. Um, wow. Okay. There'll be, um, yeah, all sorts of games. There'll be a lot of games where the people who are running the games have, make, have created the rules themselves. Right. Uh, yeah, but think of every sort of every historical period or any historical period you want to. And it's be. represented. Yep. That's kind of neat. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to head up there on the Friday, I think, which is like I think it's the first weekend in March. Nice. So. Definitely cool. Then uh, you've got Gamma. I've got Gamma. I've got uh, Adepticon in March. I think that Adepticon takes place like around the same time. No, Adepticon's the same weekend. Yeah, it's, it's like the, the next weekend. It's the weekend after, yeah. And that's the same weekend as Unpub. Yep. Um, and you'll be here. And I'll be at Unpub, yeah. yeah. Which is really, I'm kind of excited for that. Yeah. 
uh, because I actually can potentially have opportunity to sit down and play some games. Cool. And these games are be games that aren't published yet. They're you know a bunch of designers come there. Are they unpub? They are unpublished, <laughs> and a bunch of designers come there with their, you know, what they hope will be uh, the next hot game. Cool. And uh, they play test them or, or have people demo them and give the critiques on the games and stuff yeah. uh, for design uh, changes that might be necessary. I think it's a and great then idea. there's publishers there, yeah, scoping out the scene. Right. So. Yeah. And where and when is that one, Rick? That is the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, I believe, of uh, March. Yep. Or tw yeah. The 23rd is the Friday, I think. Or then it's 23rd, 24th, 25th. Yeah. It's that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, that week we also have some special guests coming in here, if I remember correctly. We do that week have some special guests coming in here. Oh, so the week, so on the, I want to say the 20th, which is uh, yeah. Wednesday, I believe, right? Mm. Tuesday? It's in the future. Who knows? It's in the future. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't see the future. But uh, in m that same week, um, Christian Waters from Osprey Games will be here okay, with the, cool. the creator of Frostgrave. Yep, with Joe McCulloch. Yeah, and we're going to play Frostgrave. Excellent. Uh, I think the 20th is the Tuesday. If yes. It's a Tuesday? Yep. All right, so Tuesday or the Wednesday. It's one of those two days. Yep. Uh, he'll be in here with... Uh, the, the creator and we'll be making uh, some playtime of uh, Frostgrave. Cool. It'll be fun. So, actually, I'm going to paint those out, not on the on the air. All right. I'm going to paint those at home on my knolls. All right. Uh, yeah. Get your knoll Get my knoll war band together. Nice. And uh, and then right after that, the two days leading into Unpub, uh, Renegade Game Studios will be here. Okay. And what are and they going to be uh, showing off? We're going to be doing. We're going to record. Um, Playing their new role-playing game, Overlight. Oh, okay, great. With uh, Paul Butler Paul? and probably yep. uh, George, George from uh, Games and Stuff yeah, in cool. Glen Burnie. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. And who knows, there might be some other special guests that will be playing that as well. Right. Uh, I haven't heard from back as far as like who all will be sitting down to play the game. Right. Uh, but we will be playing Overlight, and uh, which is if you guys are not on the Overlight uh, Facebook page uh, group. You need to be in there because they're, they're they're dropping like um, teasers on the different races that are available and some other neat little details about what Overlight is. What's the what's the genre? Where would it be? Where does it fit? Is it? Oh man, that's a great question. Um, future. I remember you telling me about this, Rick, and you had a really hard time describing it's it. It's hard to describe. It really it's is. Not, it's yeah. it has it has a flair of fantasy, a flair of future. But not so okay. much the future of like um, the electronics that you would see in like a Blade Runner thing, but right. it is a a future esque or an alternate future esque type okay. of um, environment. It has different races than pretty much any other RPG that's out there. Right, um, and it's you know. As, it's just it's a lot of fun. Okay. Um, cool. It's a very mind's eye theater type, right? Uh, um, role playing, which is a lot of fun too. If you're very much about the the RP and not the die rolling aspect of role playing, right? Yep. Uh, so, uh, and it has a it's it's dice mechanics are, uh, I think, different than any other dice mechanic out there too. Right. So there are a lot of cool new things that are involved in it so excellent yeah i can't really disclose all uh, a lot of it so you, you got to go to the fa the facebook fan page for overlay <laughs> to get the information they are dropping um and even my information is even though i have played it is vague because i i don't know what i can say and what i can't ah uh, okay you know that's so. fair enough cool that's it would great. be nice to get posts on upcoming cons all right Gale Force 9, where, is it, where are we at with that? Um, should be a war game room. Where are we at? I'm going to back up. We haven't really answered a lot of questions on here. No. I might take my money there to go play Warhammer. Okay. Um, Walter Bledsaw says there should be a museum for minis. Yeah. That's kind of a cool idea. I pronounced Zinch right. You did? I, did I just do it again? Yep. Dang it. Um, Michael says, so if two people have the minis and want to play, I'm sure it will be there. That's true. Yep. 
Walter says, I like local cons. The big ones are overwhelming. They can be. I know my first Dragon Con I went to, I actually had a, I guess, almost a panic attack. Oh, right, okay. Because I wasn't prepared for... How many people? Yeah, the, yeah, how crowded it would be. Yep. Shelby, checking in again. Hey, Shelby, great progress on the Dragon Warren. Good job, Dave. <laughs> Shelby noticed you. Yay. Senpai you. noticed you. Thank you. Kurt P Pearson put GADCON, LOL. Uh, yeah, it's a different sort of uh, event, but if you like to play Adventure League, D&D, Pathfinder, Starfinder, it's the place to go. Right. Cool. Uh, James says he wants a new Firefly game from Gale Force 9. Right. It yep. looks pretty cool. Uh, oh, it's, uh, what's that called? Well, obviously, is it Firefly, Serenity? But, um, Serenity? I think it's called Firefly, uh, brown coats and something. Oh, okay. I can't remember. The first novel I encountered was a prisoner of goblins, and he became my follower. Uh, Noles are generally thankful when you release them from goblins. That's true. Uh, Kurt says it's also a good gad kind. It's also a good uh, kind to buy old, uh, buy off uh, old D and D stuff. Okay. Uh, there was a uh, one of the vendors that would show up there would bring like old first edition modules from right. D and D and a bunch of other stuff. I I, I think I I dropped. Like almost two hundred dollars. Oh wow! On old modules last year, um, yeah. I wanted to just buy out all of the <laughs> all of their D and D stuff, but I was like, I don't want to. Where am I going to store it? I got I, I got to you know pay rent. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. Then I went and bought a big Pathfinder collection. <laughs> right. Yep. There's a friend of mine. Uh, Brown coats and brigands. Brown coats and brigands. Thank you. A friend of mine out in Chicago is a big uh, role player, and has a huge collection. Yeah. And he just spent uh, probably spent about a year uh, building out his uh, basement mm -hmm. and lining the walls like a an old library. Yeah. And it just looks fantastic. Gives all the shelves like floor to ceiling. Filled with role playing games and modules. And oh, that's, from, I resonate with that information. From all ears. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> um, the, uh, my my our role playing like uh, library is is pretty good. Yep. But it's not a. Uh, it doesn't take up like even one wall of my basement. Right. Uh, it takes up like one of those IKEA five by fives. Right. Yep. Um, I have. Uh, one of those is probably what would fill all my RP books. Right. Yeah. It's pretty slick. Oh, Johnny's back here. <clears throat> Johnny had to come up here and fix this. It's tough. It's <coughs> tough. Excuse I'm me. Working with so many different cameras and different angles. Thank you, Johnny. Okay, so what I'm doing now is actually just doing that the final sort of clean up and going through and painting everything else that I haven't painted yet, painting it all black. Um, that way I can go through and do the the final touch up so anything that's leather I can go through and paint with the charred brown and right. um, the, so the, the fingernails and the toenails I painted those black now do you think I should paint those like yellow or something? bone sort of color or should I leave them black I mean it could be either or I like, I like black let's see how it looks I mean you think you leave them black? Yeah, I think okay. Let's black. go with that, man. It looks great. So uh, Michael says a year ago at MarsCon, which I believe is in Williamsburg, Virginia, uh, okay. spent two hundred in just buying piezo flip mats. <laughs> wow. Do they even have that many? I mean, I've got a lot. The collection I bought was ginormous. It took four big boxes that were like, I don't know, they're <laughs> they're they're huge boxes. Right. That I got, they were shipped to me from Seattle, Washington, or the Washington State area. Right. And uh, it was ridiculous. Right. It also came with like a bunch of dragon magazines and oh, uh, dungeon magazines and right. old RPGA uh, booklets and stuff. So I was like in hog heaven because that was <laughs> that's my stuff right there. Yep. That is cool when you get uh, get shipments in like that. Yeah, I was like, yay! And now I got another gentleman who's got a big collection out in the in Washington State again. Yeah. Uh, who's like, hey, I'm, I'm looking to sell off my collection. You interested in buying? I'm like, oh, cool. I am. <laughs> and it's almost like all second edition stuff, which 
oddly, I don't have a lot of. Okay. Um, I do. Yeah, it, you know, it's very strange. So, just just to make sure I got my my timeline straight and my everything clarified. So there's Dungeons and Dragons, which be re regarded as first edition. For, yeah, first edition. And then. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons came next, or was no, it second edition Dungeons and Dragons <coughs> right. and then Advanced? Oh, so you had Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which technically is first edition. That would be like the blue okay. cover with the with the wizard, or the one where the, the player's handbook where they're popping the eye out of the yeah the gem out yeah. of the eye. Yeah. Um, uh, that would be first edition. Uh, then second edition was uh, still Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, but it, the the player's handbook was at like golden uh, okay. golden cover. Uh, with I think it was Eastley art. I can't remember if it was Jeff Eastley that did the right. artwork on that one. Okay. Um, and then you had third edition, which came out in I want to say around ninety nine two thousand. All right. Uh, and then it went into three point five, and then that's where Pathfinder kind of broke away and had their own campaign world as part of the open license agreement. Right. And then fourth edition rolled in around two thousand ten eleven. Right. And then it died almost as quickly as it arrived. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. And now we have fifth edition. Okay. But be, even before first edition, you had the uh, the chain mail and uh, the, the small Dungeons and Dragons booklets, like the white box booklets okay. and stuff. I guess that's that's the confusion. Yeah. The confusing part for me is okay. so if AD&D &D is edition first, one, first edition. First edition. What was the edition before that? Because they was fun. Or was it? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, that's true. That role play, know. role play your way out of that, sir. Dang it! Ha ha ha! I've it's all it's timey wimey. That's what it is. I can't really defeated you with my plus three <laughs> argument of logic. Yep. Don't do not confuse the facts with logic. <laughs> oh, yep. <laughs> At fifteen, that is only thirteen maps. Wow. I, I call old Mag's reference material. First book was Monster Manual for him. Right. Yeah, everybody loved Thacko. James says he never liked D&D. &D. was a Palladium kid all the way. I can see that, James. Okay. Palladium was a lot of fun and a lot easier to die. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you have a, a chart, you roll it. Oh, you took an arrow to the eye? You're dead. Um, I, was, I was literally rolling my character up. Right. Yeah, you well, died you, you died in character creation. <laughs> Sorry. It's like, what? You gotta try hard to do that. No, you just have to roll the wrong guy. <laughs> it's like, crap. That is funny. I don't mean to laugh at your misfortune. <clears throat> a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. A little bit of time has gone by now. Yeah, it doesn't hurt me. You can laugh at it. I can laugh at it. Yeah. I still play my first character that I ever created, and but I play him in different... Uh, like, uh, well, I'm trying to think of the word, um, reincarnated versions of him. Okay. You know, <laughs> my my ranger, my human ranger. Yeah. That's the first char character class and character I ever played was Orion Frost. Instead of F-R-O-S-T, it's F-R-A-U-S-T. Okay. And uh, he says, he's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think Johnny's getting ready to show the uh, the tiefling again. Now you guys are probably why aren't you painting, Rick? I'm done. Oh, with you're not both, done. With both of my tieflings. There are so many things we could be painting. Oh, I actually do have some pirates here, a Gith Yankee, a town guard, and a half-elf rogue in front of me as well. But why would I want to get started on something like this when next week the fun begins? Oh, we're starting <laughs> next week? Next week's February. Oh my goodness, already? <laughs> February already? Oh jeez, check that out. Carl says, uh, way back I played Lord of the Rings RPG. Boy, did we die quick, yup. Let's hear some first characters. In one <laughs> hour, in one two hour session I killed 12 characters and I was not the GM. Nice. Digbo the Dwarf, coming from Walter. Digbo, that's a cool name. So I have a few characters that I try I, I try to do new versions of all the time. So yeah. there's o Orion Frost, who's my human ranger, Lassiter Lore Seeker, who is my human thief, right. uh, Mace Thunderforge, who is my dwarven fighter. Mace Thunderforge. Mace Thunderforge. He's <laughs> so awesome. Uh, there's uh, 
uh, Grundar Flamebeard. Right. And um, is he also a dwarf? Also a dwarf. He's actually <gasps> in my like storyline head uh, mind frame. Yep. He is Mace's like number one. Right. Uh, his right hand man. And then there's Fender Mallet. Okay. Who's another dwarf? And Fender is just. So you play a lot of dwarves, is what you're saying. Or Sledge, Sledge Gravelgrim. Fender Mallet is from TSR. Or okay. from, uh, Sledge Gravelgrim is my other dwarf. Right. Uh, and they're like my trifecta team of just killers. <laughs> um, awesome dwarves. Yeah. <laughs> of, of, of murderers. Yeah, they're my murder hobos. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and they are amazing <laughs> murder hobos. I have Bran Darmichael, who's a cleric. Right. Shandor Silverblade, a paladin. Shandor Silverblade. Yeah. I have like these... I, epic names. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Shander Silverblade, a, a paladin who uh, um, at one time it, it, his, uh, a version of him was a paladin of Lathander, so the, the, the morning lord, the rising sun. All the, you know, he, was, yep. re, he was awesome. Cool. Uh, and for everybody out there that doesn't like pal- or that does not like paladins, I'm sorry you never had a, you've never had an opportunity to see me play Shandor. Because uh, he's awesome. He's a really cool cat. Um, and then I had, uh, wow, there's Aurora Frost, which is Orion's sister. Right. She's a, a, a human barbarian uh, and right. rides a polar bear. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Like in the Golden Compass. Like in the Golden Compass. But I had cool. her, I actually uh, created her based off the old Rumplemints. Uh, uh, va- like a uh, drink. Okay. The advertisement had like this warrior woman riding a, a polar bear back in like the seventies and early eighties. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. <laughs> 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 had that like heavy metal art feel. Right. Okay. So. <clears throat> yeah. I was definitely gonna give it to you. Uh, Yuri, the five foot five mutant rooster. Juliet, Azel, Azlathor, the siege mage. Candor, Candor, Shandor. Huh? Could they be related? Uh, the Paladin. My first character uh, by Carl, I don't recall how to spell his name, but it was Picathea, the cleric, made it to fifth level before dying by black dragon acid. Oh, that's a shame. Kurtz is a Glendrick Malachi Coco for life. Uh, Dwaladin, the dwarven cleric. That's coming from Walter. Walter has a lot of characters. That's hilarious. Just like me. Walter yep. and I are like probably brothers from other mothers. Yep. <laughs> you and all your characters. I have a lot. Nevin Drakewood. Nevin Drakewood. Mm-hmm. He was a mage cleric. Can't find the part My oldest son's name is Nevin. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. After your... Uh, after my character. <laughs> after your character, rather than your character being named after your son. Correct. I hadn't, I uh, hadn't, what? <laughs> I see Johnny back there going, oh, geez. Yeah, I'm sure he regrets being born with that name. <laughs> he does now. All right. Oh, he's, he's known. He's known. He's been named, he was named after a D&D character. That's funny. I mean, I tried to name my second son Thor, so, you know, that didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. But I was able to get Luke in there, or Lucas. Because right. I was tr- trying to go, his, his sister is uh, Linnea. I was going to get Luke and Leia, but right. yeah, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> cool. A friend of mine named uh, his son after a uh, Space Marine Primarch, or okay, Chaos Space Marine Primarch from uh, 40K. Yeah. yeah. Conrad. Conrad? Conrad. <clears throat> yep. I don't know why, but I've always, I've, I've actually liked that that name Conrad for characters. Right. Yep. Uh, it's got that kind of like uh, everyman hero. Yep. Type sound to it. All right, James. Enjoy your uh, rest of your day there back at work. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Thanks for dropping by. All right. So that's actually our hour. We're oh. up. Yeah. Johnny didn't give us a five minute warning. Boo. Do you do that? No. I do. I need you to. But um. So in. F- uh, okay. What's the matter? What are you doing? Oh, put his on a rotator? Oh, hang on. Okay. Oh, come on, Dave. Oh, jeez, jeez. All day with this guy. Maybe if you give me some warning, I would have, <laughs> like, painted faster or something. I don't know. Um, well, while you wait for that, here's my other tiefling, the low-level version. Yep. 
Check that out. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. So you think their daggers in the... Uh, yeah, I put them as like a purple energy spin. with red. Yeah. So. He's throwing out chili peppers. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. The mas a, Master Chef tiefling. Okay, that's enough. Okay. <laughs> what? What are you going to so, call your tiefling? So last night I went to the, the, to the Mead Hall. Oh, you did? And cool. we, it was Adventure of the Mead Hall last night and played some D&D. I actually dungeon mastered a, oh, wow. uh, cool. one of the Adventure League modules, uh, the Black the Black Road, yep. where you're basically um, running with a caravan to get a stat statue to a uh, another uh, town just outside the Anorak Desert. Right. Um, it was pretty fun getting to have enough to sit down. Every player except for one at my table had never played before. Oh, wow. And I had uh, six six players. One of them was this female uh, who was playing a dragonborn sorcerer yeah. who she named Daddy oh. with an I. Right. And that was she was quite quite humorous. <laughs> right. It's like, well, Daddy doesn't like that. Talk, like, talked in the third person. Yeah. Or first person. What am I talking third about? Third person. Huh? Third, third person. You're Fourth right. dimension. You're correct. Right. So in the third person, so, you know, Daddy doesn't like it when you do that. Or Daddy doesn't like that. I was like, oh, this is so, so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. Let's take a look at just a little bit wet. this amazing Dragonborn. Done. Right Finally finished the Dragonborn. There we go. Holy smokes. Mm. That that guy right there needs to be in a campaign. I'm interested to see when he when it sort of rolls around to his shield. Yeah, how that looks. I, it, it's gonna look amazing. Yeah, I know. So for those of you that are watching, uh, this miniature and many others like it are part of the Nolzor's Marvelous Miniatures line of pre uh, pre primed unpainted miniatures by WizKids. Uh, in this set, you would get this miniature and an additional uh, Dragonborn uh, yep. as the character set comes. And just like the tieflings, these two tieflings come in the same package. It's like four ninety nine. You get yep. two amazing miniatures. It's pretty wild. And uh, you can get these at your local retailer. So you can go to your local game store, uh, check out their miniature racks, and be like, "All right, I'm going to have to buy this entire skew of goblins," as I like to do. Sure. Yeah, you know, yep. you know, it's a, it's the best. You should call them up beforehand. And that's if they have goblins, or just well, say put them away. Well, or just say, "Hey, I'm going to be coming in on Saturday." Can you place an order? It's Monday today. Can you place an order for goblins for me? Uh, I like to be like hunting the wild. Okay. You know, if it's there, cool. I'll buy it. If it's not there, that's ah, okay. I'm okay. probably gonna buy something else. I'm just thinking that it, you know you want the goblins. I always want the goblins. <laughs> <laughs> I want about a thousand of them. Yep. Paint a yeah. thousand goblins and just have a small village build. Yeah. All right, and this thousand goblin <laughs> horde coming down off this hill. Right. Into, into the, the village, into the village, right. and you and your awesome. party and the and the and the, the villagers have to defend the the, the village. That would be wild. A thousand goblins. I know. Could you imagine that? <laughs> I don't want to. You'd have to put them on trays of like ten or, or yeah. twenty five or something to, to for that kind of uh, gameplay, but it would still look glorious. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then maybe have a couple <laughs> like larger, like a, an orc or two, a hobgoblin mixed in there too. Right. Because yeah, goblins aren't really going to be able to tact tactically. Uh, maybe you just don't want it. Maybe you just want it to be like a horde of oh, yeah, for sure. locusts. Oh, yeah, for locusts. Yeah, a complete locust plague. Yeah. That's what you want. Oh, yeah, definitely. The visual on that <laughs> it literally is, it's possibly the most exciting thing ever. That'd so, be awesome. Oh, definitely good. So, Justin, at WizKids, if you're watching us, and uh, you just happen to have a thousand goblins laying around. Send them to him. I need them. This guy. I need them so badly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but anyways, yep. aside from that, go to your local game store. Thank you for joining us. Check out Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook page as well. Yep. And uh, is Nova this weekend? No. Wasn't oh, that? sorry, no. Um, the Nova Open Charitable Foundation uh, Ultimate Shade Spire Collection Raffle mm -hmm. ends this weekend. Okay. Uh, so you do have time to go to NovaOpenFoundation.org. That's all one word, NovaOpenFoundation.org, uh, to buy some tickets. Okay. It's basically everything that's currently available for Shade Spire. Right. Uh, and painted by myself and Drew Carrington of One Inch Heroes. Yeah. So... 
So go check that out if you haven't check already. Uh, the tickets are five dollars. Five dollars a piece. That's amazing. Uh, it's ten dollar checkout at the website. Mm -hmm. So two tickets. Two tickets. We'll get you there. All and right. uh, yeah, definitely cool. It'll be announced. Uh, first at Las Vegas Open, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't have to be at Las Vegas Open to win it. I actually have it all at my house okay. in its KR multi-case packaging. Oh, nice. It's absolutely fantastic. And uh, as soon as we know who it is and we confirm their address, we'll ship it out to them. That's awesome. I'll be taking it to the post office. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Super it's going to cool. be awesome. And the money, the charities goes uh, This one is Doctors Without Borders. So, uh, and you can't beat that. Doing all sorts of fantastic work around the world. Yep, absolutely. Uh, which reminds me, we'll also ship anywhere in the world. So if anybody's watching from lands that are not the U.S., wow, uh, you can still get in on it. There you go. That's pretty you awesome. Just, you, you never have to leave your house. You can yeah. just win all sorts of awesome also, prizes. Also, awesome <laughs> prizes. And now, again, stay tuned. Uh, I know we said we're going to put the Beholder piece up, uh, how you could win that. Uh, so we, we're, we're going to get that before the end of the week. And also next next month, uh, stay tuned for that prize, uh, uh, the big thing we're going to do with that. Yep, that'll well. be awesome. I'm really looking forward to, um, to painting some Star Wars Legion. It's Absolutely. Super cool. It's glorious. Yep. On that note, I've been Rick. And I've been Dave. And we will see you at the <laughs> game store. <laughs>